Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Mitsubishi delays delivery of their MRJ airliner. Wingsuit Jumper looks to break four records in one flight. FAA changes drone waiver for operation on closed set. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's January 26, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The first delivery to a customer of a Mitsubishi MRJ airliner has been pushed back two years, according to Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. The company says the change is due to revisions of certain systems and electrical configurations on the aircraft to meet the latest requirements for certification. Mitsubishi said on their website, since the historic MRJ first flight in November 2015, we have made significant progress in both engineering and test, and now three aircraft are in flight test in the United States. The design changes will not affect aircraft performance, fuel consumption, or functionality of the systems. The company says, we will continue with ongoing flight test program with current test aircraft configuration obtained certification flight test data of performance flight characteristics for type certificate. Wherever there are records, there are people looking to break them. And such is the intent of British wingsuit jumper Fraser Corson, who is considered to be a pioneer in this extreme sport. Corson plans to jump from an altitude of 40,000 feet on his record-breaking attempt. If all goes well, he'll set new records for distance, currently some 19 miles, while flying at a top speed of more than 250 miles per hour in a jump that will last more than nine minutes. Corson will be jumping into air no warmer than minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The oxygen level will allow him about eight seconds of consciousness to get stabilized into flying configuration in air that he can breathe. No date has been set for the attempt. After the break, it's alleged FAA did not notify drone operators of waiver changes. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B Models. The B Models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Movie makers and videographers who use drones on a closed set are very likely in violation of federal law, and they may not even know it. A report appearing on the website Drone360 indicates that the FAA amended Section 333 to revoke exemptions granted to drone operators to fly in a closed set, and the agency did not notify those exemption holders that their exemptions were no longer valid. According to Drone360, there had been 590 closed set authorizations issued by the FAA. The drone industry sees the change as a major step backwards in the FAA's intent to allow the operation of drones over people to become more commonplace. FAA Administrator Michael Huerta was expected to give an update on the situation during his speech at the Consumer Electronics Show earlier this month, but all he said was that the agency will be looking to our industry partners to develop more ingenious ways to ensure drones can fly over people without sacrificing safety or security. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. <music> Thank you. 
There's no doubt about it, EAA's STC program is bearing fruit. Last year, EAA formed EAA STC LLC, which is a subsidiary for STC development. As a result of their collaboration with Dynon, they received an STC that allowed the Dynon EFIS D10A and EFIS D100 displays to be installed in type certificated aircraft. This was a major step forward in allowing type certificate aircraft to reap the benefits of what the experimental aircraft movement has been doing for years. However, EAA STC development is also leading to advances in other areas. A proposed new compliance pathway for parts manufacturer approval for manufacturing of low-risk safety enhancing avionics and other low-risk equipment emerged during a January 17th meeting in Oshkosh between EAA, top FAA officials, and aviation industry members. This alternate approach would be based on a tiered system that provides different methods to show a compliant quality system and varied levels of oversight based on the level of risk associated with the specific equipment being certified. Finally, things are moving in the right direction and applying common sense to aircraft equipment. We think EAA has started something that will improve safety and reduce cost in general aviation, and that's what we needed. After these messages, the NBAA welcomes three new board members. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Explore no limits flying in the FAA certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The National Business Aircraft Association announced the election of three new members to their board of directors. They are Shelley Lezakar, Dizavalis, Milt Hobbs, and Mark McIntyre. Each will serve until the next annual meeting where they will be eligible for election to three-year terms. Imprudent acts in aviation can lead to consequences. A student at Andrews High School in South Carolina faces 30 days in jail for tossing a paper airplane that struck a teacher in the eye. The student was charged with third degree assault and battery. Boeing has been notified that the International Association of Machinist Union has petitioned the National Labor Relations Board a second time for a union election at the company's North Charleston, South Carolina facilities. A previous petition had been filed in March 2015, but was withdrawn. A pilot who opposed the relocation of an Ontario Provincial Police Search and Rescue helicopter from Sudbury to Orillia has been found guilty on two counts of misconduct for publicly opposing the move. The pilot pleaded not guilty and has mounted a whistleblower defense. GI Aviation, the latest entry into the private air charter market in the UAE, is now open for business. GI is the first to operate the Pilatus PC-12 NG commercially in the region and is pioneering an all-new business model for the Gulf region. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. The Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, known to us all as AUVSI, has announced the launch of a new initiative which they call the Remote Pilots Council, which is referred to as the RPC. This is kicked off with a national tour to promote education and dialogue between commercial unmanned aircraft systems operators, industry leaders, and the FAA. Through a combination of in-person meetings, webinars, and surveys, this council of AUVSI members will discuss opportunities and challenges to ensure safe and responsible use of the national airspace system. Brian Wynn, the AUVSI president and CEO, said in part, AUVSI members, particularly those that are part 107 remote pilots, 
are driving the value of this technology. The RPC will further enable AVSI's collaboration with the government to advance UAS in a safe and responsible manner. When added, the RPC's immediate goals are to bring AVSI members together to provide feedback on real-world UAS operations, including clarifying and offering suggestions for greater efficiency in the FAA waiver process. The first RPC meeting was hosted by the Silicon Valley AUVSI chapter in San Francisco on January 12th, and future meeting dates can be found on the AUVSI website. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>